And Andre Fialio versus Joaquin Buckley. Andre Fialio is a man with dangerous power who sometimes falls into these ego battles where you got to take one and you got to give one back, right? Now you're fighting Joaquin Buckley and introducing him to the 170 pound division. AJ, I got to ask you right here. Is this one of those rare moments where you're like, finally, why were you not here this whole time? I mean, honestly, this dude has got the frame. He's got the power. He's got everything for a 170. He was saying, I was fighting at 185, walking around at like 182, 183. That's like Kevin Holland-esque. What do you think? Yeah, it's him and Kelvin Gaslam, Derek. It makes no sense. I'm excited to see Joaquin Buckley where uh, he de he deserves, or I guess is, is bred to be fighting, if you will. This guy is a perfect stature for it. I mean, you're looking right across. He matches pretty closely. I mean, if y'all was a big boy for uh, for welterweight as well. But, I mean, this this is a prime cut down, working out, literally cutting to the weight finally, Joaquin Buckley. He's, he's matching up. Does it aspect as well as – or does it um compare to how Cody Garbrandt did, Derek? Do you think we're going to see that kind of outcome? Or is this just a lean, mean new Mensa in a new weight class? I think that's a crazy, crazy comparison. Cody Garbrandt looked like dried out moving down to 125. You know what I mean? Buckley, no, this is where you should have been the whole time. You should have just been a little more disciplined in your camp, ate a little bit better, and just cut down to 170 in the first place because he clearly got the power to put out 185ers like it's nobody's business. This is Kevin Holland all over again right here. This is just Buckley, right? Now, the only thing that we have to really think about is – how does this affect your chin? How does this affect your cardio, if at all, right? Because if you leave it up to Buckley, he says, I do three five-minute rounds in the sauna, one minute out, and then I go in there, and I'm able to last just fine, so my cardio won't be a problem. Andre Fialio has already mentioned, ah, that might be a little bit of an issue, but more than anything else, Fialio's main concern for Buckley is the athleticism. He mentioned it. He was like, dude, he's athletic. He's got a lot of power, but he doesn't fight the smartest. And then he had to take a step back because it's like, well, sometimes I don't fight the smartest either. But you know what I mean? Here's the big difference that I see between the two. I think Fialio, and he even mentioned this in the pre-fight presser, he's been relying a little bit too much just on pure boxing, right? He walks you down and he boxes you up. And you do that against Joaquin Buckley. We've seen time and time again, especially if this is a guy closer to his frame. It's, it's hard to get in on Buckley. Clean, unless you have a wrestling threat that he has to watch out for, right? So, AJ, I have to draw back to when we just watched Johnny Walker versus Anthony Smith. It felt like there was a, a force field around Johnny Walker where he could just stand there, kick you in your legs, and be like, you got to come in here, bro. And if you come in here, I'm going to catch you. And I feel like Joaquin Buckley is kind of the same situation, except way smaller, and he forces the entry instead of just waiting. Do you see a parallel, or am I just out of my mind? I, I can see a parallel. Um, be, wa Buckley does fight in a way that is... Um forceful and 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 powerful you know you're you're going to be in a situation with buckley no matter what you're, you're not expecting a five round or a three round snooze fest in this fight any either way these guys neither of these fighters are exactly that way but buckley has a way of putting himself in situations that are both beneficial and and uh, harmful i mean look at the kevin holland fight when he got in close just like he wanted to because he's a smaller fighter closer to the chin kevin holland turns around just gives him a short one puts him out so it's it's a weird thing for Buckley because I feel like he has all the the greatness, all the intangibles, all the the kind of characteristics you look for in a really good fighter. But sometimes he's on the end, wrong end of the sword. Fialio, on the same point, is also kind of that same way. And I'm mm -hmm. I'm curious why he's thinking about the athleticism, why he's worried about the athleticism of Buckley. Because is it a problem? Yes. Is it dangerous? Yes. But does it? Do you think his loss to Nasruddin Imavov is playing a little bit too much in the head of Fialio? I mean, Muslim Solikov, excuse me, his last fight at Muslim Solikov. Uh, because Solikov, for a, how would you say, not as athletic looking person, had the snap on him. He had the speed on him and he was cutting off things, man. He was fighting an incredible fight. Now, are you more worried going into that that you're going to get more unathleticized or, or out over athleticized in a walking Buckley that's now cutting down and probably faster and just as strong as he was before? Do you think that plays into it? How also, how do you see Buckley doing? Is this, is this just a first round war, Derek, or are we going to see a cool, calm, patient Buckley like the Johnny Walker you're talking about? So to answer the first question, I don't think that it's Andre Fialio being really too concerned about, ooh, this scares me. He's super athletic. I have to watch out. I think it's more about this man. He possesses major power. 
he's bouncy, he's all over the place, and I got to mind my P's and Q's. I think it's really as simple as that, right? I don't think there's any real fear behind the Fialio here. To answer your second question, I truly think that this fight is a matter of who lands clean first. I think it's literally as simple as that. I can't say if it's going to be first round, second round, third round, but whoever lands that shot and lands it clean, I think will be too much for the other person. Both of these dudes have been knocked out. Both of these dudes knocked people out. And both of these dudes are not afraid to get in the pocket and really swing and bang. Both of them like to walk forward. I personally think Joaquin Buckley will be the one willing to walk forward. And if he needs to maintain distance, that's the big difference between the two. Buckley is a little more willing to kickbox versus solely box, right? Not going to see a shot here from Buckley or anything like that, at least I don't think. But we also have to read into the TKO props here. Plus 120 for Buckley, plus 250 for Fialio, who is like just as equal of a knockout threat. So it almost doesn't make sense. But odds makers have to see it that way for a reason. They like Walkley versus, uh, they like Joaquin Buckley, excuse me, on a decision and on a TKO more than they like Fialio doing the same. Why do you think that is? Is it strength of schedule or is Joaquin Buckley simply that dangerous of a man and moving down to 170? If that power translates, brother, it's going to be a problem. The, I To me, it makes sense on the TKO prop. I feel like Buckley has just that little bit of intangibility, especially, you know, he had the KO of the year, was last year, two years ago. This guy has the athleticism, that bounce to get it done. So I can see the KO just slightly edging him out, even though, you know, 100 plus points. But the decision to me kind of makes a little bit less sense. That's where I'm a little more confused. I feel like Fialio, with only exerting himself on the hands and feet, and or uh, just in his boxing, not really using his feet, um, he's able to maintain a little bit more, maintain the uh, slightly. Because Numenza, we've seen, and this is a new weight class, so this all could go out the door. He's tr could be training harder, could have a deeper gas tank, but we've seen him slow down a lot more. And that really right there with his explosiveness and athleticism, when he slows down in those third rounds, that's where he can get outworked, and that's where the decisions come into play. That's why I thought it'd be a little bit closer. What do you think? Well, I have to take a step back, man, because Joaquin Buckley, if you look at who he's fought recently, you're talking about a lot of grapplers, man. Imovov, Durayev, even uh, Al Hassan, uh, Ahoyo, uh, shoot. I mean, I guess that's basically it, right? But if you're looking at Andre Fialio, um, you know, you're not really dealing with those grapplers. I think that's a big part of why he has slowed down the way that he has. You have to fend off takedown shots, right? You have to make your, your moments count. So I'm actually going to push back because I think Andre Fialio is more of the first round fighter who kind of tends to fade towards rounds two and three than Buckley does. I think Buckley has just a touch of a bigger gas tank, but it's 170, so who knows, man. At the end of the day, I'm going to go right back to what I originally noted. First one to land clean wins the fight. Give me Joaquin Buckley. I'm almost like if you gave me a firefight scenario and you gave me like a handful of fighters and you're like, of all the fighters in the world, who do you want in this firefight spot? I, I think I would put Buckley there, regardless of the scenario. So give me Buckley. Give me a first-round knockout. How do you see it? Yeah, he's the man to toe the line in a firefight for sure. Derek, give me Joaquin Buckley. Give me round one TKO. I'm right there with you. I think it's going to be who lands first and who's able to take that second one because I think both of them are going to land on each other regardless. That's right. That's right. This will be a fun one, folks. If you if you don't watch MMA and you're like, oh, can you show me a fight that would get me in that? This is the fight right here. Show your friends this one. This is the banger fight right here.